A well-made turret board looks great, and today I'm going to show you how to build one using the swaging method, which is a few tools and a drill press. Building a turret board utilizing the swaging method is a traditional method for assembling a board. It's a great way to build a board very quickly, however it involves utilizing a drill press or a press of some type. The tools are very simple to make, which we'll show here. Now in building any kind of turret board, it requires four different steps. The first step is utilizing a layout or a template of some kind. The second step is taking that template and applying it to the board, transferring it to the board. The third step is cutting all the holes, and the fourth step being installing the turrets. Well, let's take care of the template right now. I'm going to be building a turret board for the 18 watt clone. Uh, here's my template, which you can download on the TubeDepot.com website. The first thing step in, build, in transferring this template to the board is to cut the template out. All right, once you've got the template cut out, now we're going to tape it. It's important that, you, that the template is on the board evenly. After you've got the template taped onto the board, I'm going to transfer the information from the template, basically the holes that we want to drill, uh, from the template onto the board. This is step number two. I'm going to use a, actually what I'm going to use here, first I'm going to show a hobby knife. Hobby knives are pretty common, most people have them. I'm going to stick it in a little spot for the hole and spin it in a little circle. Now a faster way of putting the inf taking the information from the template and moving it to the board uh, is to use a center punch. And what a center punch does is you find the spot that you, you know, drill a hole and you press the center punch down. As you press that center punch down, it's going to leave a small little divot into the, um, into the board, which makes the there's a perfect spot for the drill bit to sit in when it makes a hole. Use a center punch. Boy, it's right dead on top of it. After I've got it all hole punched, I'm going to take my template off. I'm going to lay it to the side because I'm going to need it later on to identify which one of the holes for the turrets and which one of the holes for mounting. All right, once you've transferred all the information from the template to the G10 board, it's important to take a, a marker of some kind and mark on the top of the board like a T or something to identify which one is the top, which one you want to mount the turrets from, or you might run the risk of mounting a turret from the bottom <laughs> by accident. And I've done that before. So now it's time to drill the holes. All right, now that I'm going to install my 332nd drill bit, which is what is needed for these turrets. I'm going to install it in my drill press, chuck it, tighten it down. I'm going to raise my Raise my platform back up, tighten it down, <laughs> and the moment has come. It's goggle time. Here's where it's important to put very good divots in the board so that the drill bit, when it comes down, will go right into those divots and cut hole straight through the board. The divots make it possible to drill straighter holes. It's important when working around a drill press <clears throat> that you don't wear any loose clothing or have long hair hanging down. I remember back when I was in eighth grade and I was in shop class and there's this girl who had this really long blonde hair, beautiful hair. And she was working around the drill press, and she got her hair caught in the drill press. Because the drill press doesn't want to, it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Now that we've drilled the holes, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of burrs on the on the underside of the board where we were drilled through. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these little extra burrs off. You can use a hobby knife to kind of cut them off, but it's kind of labor intensive. What I find that's even easier is taking a pretty good sized drill bit and slowly turn it in each one of the holes. And that will take off just a little bit of the, um, of the board material and cleans those holes up perfectly. All right, we finished three of the four steps on creating your own turret board using the swaging method. 
Uh, step one was getting a template. Step two is transferring the information from the template to the board. Step three is to drill all the holes. Now we're getting ready to move to step four, which is to install the turrets. Now the holes for these particular turrets are supposed to be 330 seconds, which is what I drilled, and you'll see that the holes, the turrets fit right into the holes. Now the problem is, they also come right out. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to have some tools put in our drill press that's going to basically bend the, pack, the back of this turret tightly outwards so that it will stay in the board and won't come out. Now I have two tools that I have to use. One is my, my swaging tool, which is right here, and the other one is my anvil. Now both of these are made, are basically created by, by taking some parts, some bolts and some nuts and some washers uh, that you can pick up at hardware store or also at TubeDepot.com because I've sourced all these parts out. But it requires a little bit of work from you to, to make them. The swaging tool, which is this tool right here, started life as a simple hex head bolt and a single nut. In this case here, what we do is we end up cutting off the head and filing it down to a, a cone shape. The anvil, it started life as a, another hex head nut, much smaller one, with three washers in it three flat fender washers, a simple lock nut, or lock washer, excuse me, lock washer, and then the nut to go along on side of it. Now what's special about the anvil is it's also got a hole drilled right down the middle, an eighth inch hole drilled down the middle. Now I'm ready to put the turrets in. I'm going to go ahead and put my tools on my, on my drill press. I'm going to lower the platform down, move it out of the way. I'm going to take my chuck, I'm going to pull it all the way up. And then here's the reason why that nut is there, so it'll give you some force against the piece so it won't go back up into the machine, because you're going to put some torque down on it. On my platform, I'm going to take my anvil, I'm going to put the bolt, one washer underneath, two washers on top, my lock washer, I'm going to tighten it down. I'm going to raise this up, that's a pretty good height, and I'm going to center the two together, because it's important that they that they lock together. All right. This is the fun part. I'm going to take the turret. I'm going to put it in my little anvil at the bottom. Please note this is the top of the board because I got the T on it. I'm going to turn the board over because I want that turret to be coming into this board like this. I'm going to put the first turret in place here. I'm going to come down with my swaging tool and I'm going to press that turret out. And that's it. That turret won't come back out of the board. If you have a drill press, this is the preferred method uh, I, I recommend over the, the press fitting method. Press fitting is really good if you're working on a dining room table or if you don't have a, a uh, drill press. This is terrific. And these tools these nuts, bolts, and washers are really inexpensive. Only a few dollars. I like that black. That black looks very cool. This is a great board that anybody can build with simple handmade tools and a drill press. Until next time, I'm Rob Hull.